I was just over by uh, my grandma's house and I um, was walking over by these train tracks here and I found this little uh, gray tree frog, either a hyla uh, versicolor or a hyla chrysosceles. The only way to determine from the copes in the eastern gray tree frog is to hear their call or like test their genetics, but obviously I can't do that right now. But um, yeah, my first frog of the year actually, it's been a really slow start up north. I found some snakes and salamanders, but no frogs yet. But here's my first frog of the year. I'm in southern Illinois right now. It's like 40 something degrees. It's not optimal weather, but I mean, frogs are out, I guess. So <laughs> that's always a, it's always a plus. But yeah, I'm gonna take some pictures of this guy and uh, see if I can find anything else. found this uh, dusky salamander, spotted dusky salamander, um, Desmognathus fushus, I believe, I think that's how it's pronounced, but yeah, this is my lifer actually, um, my first uh, species in the Desmognathus genus, um, as you can see, we found them in this creek here, uh, it's got some really nice clay soil, and they actually need that. Unfortunately, um, these streams like this are being dug out and used for kitty litter. But uh, there happens to be a really strong population of them here. We flipped about 40 in, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes. Yeah, they're just all over. They're really hard to catch though, but I was able to manage to get this one. But yeah, they're a super cool species and we're just going to see if we can find anything else. Really cool. piece of tin here, we found two mole salamanders, Ambistoma talpoidium, and this one actually looks gravid, even though it's in the spring. I'm breathing heavy because <laughs> I just <laughs> ran around the pool here, but Tony actually led us on his property and we were able to flip this piece of tin and we found two of them. This one looks gravid. They're actually fall breeders, and I've never uh, seen a gravid one before, especially in the spring, but. Now what, this is March 28th. Yeah, it's March 28th. It's kind of cold out, like 50 something. It rained a little bit earlier, but. 54 as I was coming home. 54. Yeah, really cool. I'm gonna take some pictures of these guys and see if we can find anything else. over here underneath the same log. He got a diamondback water snake, Nerodia rhombifer, and um, this one is the biggest one I've ever personally held, you know. Uh, I've caught the small one back in May of last year, and it's marbled salamander, Ambistoma opacum. It's starting to rain a little bit. We're probably gonna head out soon, but um, yeah, super cool. Um, I don't see these guys often. I've only ever caught two now that I have this one, 
and uh, marble salamanders. They're pretty common around here. We found a lot of them so far, but yeah, really cool. I'm super happy to have found these guys. And we're just gonna put these guys away and see if we can find anything else. guys, we're out here in Missouri and underneath the asphalt trunk over there, I just flipped two ringneck snakes, prairie ringneck snakes, uh, Diadophus punctatus edwarsii, or uh, Diadophus punctatus arnii. Um, these guys, I don't find them very often, they don't live in range of me, they're about three hours west or south of me, and uh, even then I don't find too many of them. So these are kind of a treat for me, probably I'll end up seeing a lot more of them, but I don't see them too often. Um, they're really cool. Uh, what they'll do is they'll show off this um, orange fade into a uh, red belly and that'll make a predator think that they're venomous and they actually have a very potent um, musk and it smells very bad and they don't like, uh, predators don't like the smell and it probably doesn't taste very good I imagine. But um, yeah, they have really nice speckles on there. On the top, they're called ringneck snakes because they have a ring on their neck. Um, and they, they're pretty cold tolerant. It's about 50 degrees and sprinkling right now. It's not optimal snake hunting weather, but you still able, were able to find these guys. But yeah, pretty cool. Um, these guys actually eat salamanders. They have two fangs in the back of their mouth that are actually mildly toxic. They don't harm any humans. If I got bit, I might swell up a little bit, but that's if I have a reaction to it. But yeah, super cool. You can see he's rolling up his uh, tail right there to show the red off. And he was playing dead earlier. I'll get footage of that. But yeah, pretty cool. This one's pretty small. This one's pretty big. Well, I'll tell you if I find anything else with the tail. guys um underneath the rock over there I actually met up with Evan here we're in Missouri right now and uh underneath the rock over there I flipped uh this red belly snake Steraria occipita maculata underneath the same rock as a slimy salamander I'll show pictures of that but yeah this was not expected I didn't even really remember that they lived here I've uh I knew they were in this county but I didn't know like uh, how common they were or anything, but yeah, super cool. It's pretty cold right now, 40 something degrees, 45, something like that, and the temperature's uh, dropping. We saw some cave salamanders that got away, and a spotted salamander in a crevice, which is really weird, but yeah, pretty cool, and we're just going to see if we can find anything else. So we're here in Missouri and um, a funny story about this thing um, it's pretty cold right now it's like 40 something degrees and it's starting to the sun's starting to go down and everything 
overcast. It started raining a little bit earlier. And uh, I was just flipping some rocks along here. And I flipped the rock and I didn't see anything under it, so I put it back down. And we were walking along here, and Evan actually spotted a bobcat. He's behind the camera right now. And we ran over to see the bobcat, and then we're like, wow, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and then we came back here, and I looked by the rock that I flipped earlier, and half sticking out was this little um, flat-headed snake, Tantilla gracilis. Uh, these guys are a very small fossorial snake, um, decently cold tolerant, as you can see. Um, He's flickering his tongue a little bit and everything, and they, they'll eat insects. Uh, they really don't get that big. This is an adult right here. They don't get much bigger than this. All they can really eat is ants and termite larvae and possibly some other insects, but that's about it. Um, they have a really nice red belly right here. You can see that on top. They're kind of a, a pale brown, but yeah, um, they're called flat-headed snakes because they have a flatter head. They're in the same genus as crown snakes, uh, basically just crown snakes, that's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, this is a lifer for me, I've never actually seen one of these. I'm really happy to have found this. Uh, this one's decent sized for, for what it is, but yeah, we're just going to let this guy go and see if we can find anything else. <laughs> Missouri is all about right here. Some nice glades here. Yeah, I've got this red milk snake here. It's starting to thunder and everything. There's a little bit of rain coming down, but yeah. Really pretty red milk snake, Lampropeltis triangulum cispula. These guys aren't too common out here. Uh, we're in Missouri right now. The only other one I've seen was in Illinois. This one's a baby, as you can see. It's pretty small, but very beautiful snake. You can see he doesn't have too much black on him. He's got really, really bright reds. Probably, uh, probably a young of last year, maybe August or September. It hatched out of an egg, but beautiful snake. We're gonna see if we can find anything else. speckled king snake here. Um, I've found one of the, this is technically my lifer, this is Lampropeltis holbrookii. Um, I found one back in 2015 I want to say, 2014 or 2015, but it got just hit by a car. We saw the car that passed and it was puking up blood and it was definitely about to die, but this one is alive and well as you can see. Um, beautiful snake. Super happy to have found this. Been looking for one of these for a long time now here in Missouri, but yeah. One cool thing about these guys is that they eat other snakes, and it looks like this guy just ate something that's long and thin, most likely a snake, maybe an earth snake. There's tons of those on this glade here, but beautiful snake. We're going to let this guy go and see if we can find anything else. Hey guys, right here we have a tiny little... Well, actually, this is an adult. This is a ground snake, um, Sonora semiannulata. Um, these guys, most of their range in the U.S. is in Texas and Oklahoma, but you can also find them here in Missouri, as you can see. Um, they have a really spotty range, actually. Um, they're a really interesting snake. This right here is orange and black bands, as you can see, but they can also be brown, gray, they can be a lot of different colors. Uh, this is a lifer for me. These are 
Um, this is a completely new genus for me too. I've never found anything in the Sonora genus. There aren't many species in that genus, but they're unlike anything I've ever found. They're really cool. Ones out here, they probably eat ground skinks and things like that. Um, they don't get too big. This is this is a good sized one actually, but beautiful snake. Um, they're not found too common, mostly because of their spotty range, but and they're very fossorial. They'll burrow underground a lot, so really pretty snake. And we're just gonna keep flipping and see if we can find anything else. Hey guys, um, Richard and Evan actually flipped this big rock over here, and they uncovered this beautiful large um, speckled king snake. Lamper built this over guy. As you can see, he's doing this weird thing where he'll coil up and he'll hide his head and everything, but they're kind of like ball pythons in the sense that they'll ball up when they feel threatened, but beautiful snake. An adult's really a treat. We found a small one earlier, but a big one, there's just nothing beats it. You can feel the constriction power in their bodies when you're holding them and stuff. They're just a big, big hardy snake. They're um, really neat looking on the bottom. They're uh, yellow just fades into solid without any black speckles or anything but really wonderful snake and yeah I'm super happy to have found this we're just gonna let this guy go and I'll tell you if I find anything else until then see you. these two prairie lizards here on um, the pretty cold uh, I don't see these guys too often they um uh, well, actually yeah I do on the glades in Missouri they're everywhere I've never seen one in habitat like this it's kind of forested uh, you can see that but yeah pretty cool my the rest of my family's down there uh, my brother and mom actually came with us there's an abandoned barn that they're wanting to get to they find that pretty cool but this is their first time herping with me <laughs> but uh, yeah Really cool and I'll just let these guys go.